This is a typical mosque in Aceh, a province of Indonesia with a population of 4 million. People here live according to Islamic faith and law. The location of Aceh is on the northern tip of Sumatra in western Indonesia. It is in the vicinity of Thailand, Malaysia and Singapore. This is life as it was in the region on the 21st of December 2004. School children smile all the time. Some children are having great fun in a small field. Others are spending their after school time at the pool. No one knows that a tremendous disaster will hit their land soon. On the 26th of December 2004, a violent earthquake measuring 9.0 on the Richter scale struck the ocean floor to the southwest of Aceh. It happened on Sunday at 7.59 a.m. It set off the deadliest tsunami in human history. In several minutes, the powerful ocean waves were on their way to hit the shore of Aceh. In the blink of an eye, more than 230,000 people were dead or missing. Years of civilization and human life were gone along with the damaged houses and public buildings. It was the end of the world for the Archinese. A month after the tragedy, 40-year-old Nujati is living alone now in complete desolation. She lost her whole family and all of her possessions. Semua habis, yaitu mama, kakak, semua habis. Mayatnya pun tak ketemu. Itu rumah saya yang ditinggalkan sama suami. Ini tak ada lagi, saya rupanya. Tak ada apa-apa lagi. This lady is not alone in her great misfortune. Hundreds of thousands of Archanese are living with nothing. Udah dibawa semua, tak ada lagi. Uang pun tak ada, mas-mas tak ada lagi. Udah dibawa semua-semua. Kita telanjang aja pergi. One of the worst tsunami-affected areas is the West Aceh district. The coastline of West Aceh was the first area to be hit by the tidal waves. This is Mulabo, the capital city, a month after the disaster. This is Jaka, a 10-year-old child, a forlorn survivor. He survived but lost his parents. He is bewildered and rarely speaks. This sad state of affairs is common in this area. His good friend Safri suffers a similar fate. In the country area of Samatiga subdistrict, an hour's drive from the capital city to the north, a 50-year-old, Jud Ainald Mardia, is living alone in a tent. She can't forget the day she lost her granddaughter. Life goes on. Time went by. Day after day, month after month. Now, over one and a half years have passed.
it has taken almost two years for 37-year-old Nurmala to be able to share her story. She lost her two little daughters and her property was destroyed. Telling the story is part of regaining her lost zest for life. She is aware now that she must face up to reality. Nurmala's husband, Zamzami, is a caring person. He is a small fisherman. When Nurmala is doing handicraft, he is always by her side. After a year staying in a tent, they are now living in a temporary shelter provided by the Red Cross. Zamzami has known the name Red Cross for a very long time, only as neutral paramedics in war. He now understands that the Red Cross does more than this. Here is the office of SRC and PMI. It is one of the busiest humanitarian agencies in West Aceh. These two organizations have been collaborating in West Aceh since the 30th of December 2004, just four days after the disaster. Nurmala and Zamzami are just one of the families who are rebuilding life with the help of the Red Cross. In front of their temporary shelter, there is a sign that a permanent house will be constructed. They are on the list of the post-emergency program of the Red Cross. The collaboration between the Indonesian and the Spanish Red Cross is in coordination with the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. In this camp, there are Red Cross delegations from many countries that work together for the recovery of West Aceh. For Miguel Urquia, this camp is his second office. Here in the camp, we do all the work that we have, the coordination between the different Red Crosses, and we can share many of our thoughts or ideas. Miguel's main office is at the PMI West Aceh branch in the capital, Malabo. Miguel has worked in Algiers before. He spent his time mainly on humanitarian work. We work in an integral way. We give them the tents, the temporary shelter, and then the permanent house. But also the activities that they need to be able to recover their, their work and the activities that they did before the tsunami, and also training on health and other things to improve their life. So for this, we have different areas. We have construction department, water and sanitation department, health department, livelihood, and also a finance department that takes care that all this uh, process is done with very clear finance and trying to make the best use of money. Yes, Spanish Mobile One. For your information, Spanish Mobile One going to Mari. Going to Mari, correct? Correct. Miguel works with Sonia Molina. She is responsible for the construction program. Spanish Red Cross, supported by Indonesian Red Cross, is working in around 70 villages in Aceh Barat. And in total, we will rehabilitate and reconstruct around 1,000 houses. Sonia is a humanistic architect who had worked in Peru and Madrid before coming to West Aceh in 2005. After the disaster, many people remained living in tent camps for extended periods of time. It is vital that displaced people have the most humane living conditions possible while the permanent houses are constructed. The Red Cross built five temporary shelter camps for 841 families or more than 3,479 people. The steel frame temporary shelters can be built by trained locals in less than one day. The beneficiaries and local workers were also trained by the Red Cross to build and maintain water supply and sanitary facilities. There are 244 temporary shelters constructed here. 
with toilets, boreholes, shallow wells, a community centre and also good roads. In the recent past, the Red Cross team always encountered damaged roads, but it's much better now. Here in Suakwante Bra village, all the temporary shelters will soon be extended with permanent houses. Here we can see the signs in front of each temporary shelter. It indicates the location of permanent houses that will be built soon. The total will be 128 houses. This means the 128 families will enjoy the permanent houses with a water supply, sanitation and electricity. In addition, the houses are earthquake proof. Before construction, discussion with the local residents is conducted in advance. It's a kind of participatory designing for houses. The thing that we were doing first with all the community and all the families was working with them about the first proposal of house. So we have to, to really know what's the way of life of the people here. There is also a collective self-supporting scheme led by the community on a voluntary basis. It's very important also to work with the community because we don't want only to reconstruct the houses but also to reconstruct the community and the community works with us and, and they also give the effort to get the house. There are a lot of uh, NGOs that are doing reconstruction, but no one is doing rehabilitation. It is also very important for the people here. Not only the houses get completely damaged, there are also houses where only one room gets damaged, or the roof, and, and all these people also, they don't have any money to repair it. So our program is helping also these people. Sonia's colleague in the construction program is Chut Marlina. Today, Tut Marlina visits the first beneficiary who got a permanent house. They become friends. At this time, 1,519 houses are being constructed in 78 villages. In West Aceh, seven schools are under rehabilitation. One of them is a primary school in Kutapadang that will be ready at the end of 2006. Gabriel Fernandez is an architect who has been working for the Red Cross since 2002. He has worked in South America, Africa, Croatia, Kosovo and many other places. His colleague Enri has less experience, but they have the same spirit. The direct beneficiaries for these schools are 3,981 students. The main materials for construction are concrete bricks. People here call it batako. The villagers are trained by the Red Cross to produce this batako. Now, here in Penangapasi village, people are making batako. They produce high quality batako and become the suppliers for many constructions. Mulai dari untuk ketahanan gempa, kita membutuhkan batako untuk dinding yang kuat. Kita memasukkan besi ke dalamnya, horizontal dan vertikal. Sehingga pada saat gempa, misalnya itu akan roboh, mereka masih menahan karena ada besi di dalamnya. Jadi Orang yang ada di sekitar rumah bisa keluar, masih ada waktu. They got organised under the community business of the livelihood program. Since the farming land has been damaged, community businesses have been destroyed and families have lost their income generating activities. By supplying the batako, the villagers can earn money and at the same time help the recovery of their homeland. Thank mm -hmm. you.
the livelihood program, is also involved in raising animals. The families are free to choose from cows, buffaloes, goats, chickens or ducks. It is known as a livestock program. The villagers are also trained to improve animal husbandry and the use of animal feed. Suhadi Amin is an expert in the livestock program. Inilah salah satu aktivitas dari kita livestock di bidang peternakan. Ini adalah sejenis ayam Arab yang biasa disebut ayam petelur dan satu harinya bisa mencapai 54 butir. He supports Lena in running a poultry farm. Kita sudah terima bantuan dari Palamera seperti membuat kandang kayu, kawat, terpal, atap, lampu-lampu itu sudah disediakan orang Palamera. Nah, sudah itu sudah siap kandang, kita dikasih ayam 200. The villagers produce sagu to be used as an ingredient in making traditional cakes. Potensi dari pohon sagunya sendiri itu cukup banyak. Jadi setelah kita buat analisa bahwa memang industri ini sangat cocok untuk untuk kita bantu kembali dan prospek kedepannya itu akan lebih cerah. Inilah nih termasuk lokasi kebun sagu. Kemudian daerah sana lagi jauh kemudian di belakangnya juga kebun sagu sepanjang uh, pinggir sungai ini This is one of the business that the Red Cross is recovering in tsunami affected areas one of the 14 that we have in our program in this particular program, we are recovering sago industry. It's a type of flower that you get from palm trees, and the whole community can benefit from this industry. Mostly are women that they have got a second activity to make this flower in order to produce cakes. What you do is you cut the tree and you grill it from the machine, and then you have to wash the rest of the trees and once you wash it, you get this starch, you will dry it, and with this you get flour, and with the flour you make cakes. Adriana Estrada and Fajar Haribowo are doing a lot of research to collect information about the right businesses for villagers. The livelihood program in West Ace covers 2,916 families in 45 villages. In Kuala Bubon village, the ladies are busy with embroidery. They are making traditional wedding decorations. Adriana greatly appreciates their work. 25 women working in this business. Most of them are widows or women that they are alone. It's something that we try to support that they are not dependent and they can, be, uh, they can make a own living of this business. They are professionals, they used to do this type of work before the tsunami and as you can see the work is very fine and very special and they will sell all this wedding ornamentation and with the income they will continue the business making a new one and rent it and with them supporting the whole community. Adriana also works with Alex Molina who is an expert in agriculture. Alex is very creative in improving the farmer's productivity. We can check that the quality of the harvest, and especially of the rice, is okay, it's a proper harvest. We have used a local variety of rice, who is very adapted to this kind of environmental conditions. The farmers have received intensive training to adopt sustainable farming methods, and they are now using hand tractors.
Rice seeds are distributed to farmers. 240 farmers here have been trained in organic farming and one group has just been set up to produce fertilisers. Iskandar Zulkarnain is a lecturer at Melabu Agricultural Institute who joined the Red Cross at the beginning of 2005. Kebetulan saya juga kena tsunami, jadi saya juga amat ingin ikut serta membantu masyarakat di daerah saya. Yang kita bantu sebanyak 6 kecamatan terdiri atas 35 desa. Mengucap ribuan terima kasih banyak. Karena dulu-dulu yang enggak pernah kami rasakan semacam ini. Ya, dengan adanya bantuan dari Palang Merah Spanyol untuk Palang Merah Indonesia ini, memang kami merasa sangat puas. Berkat kerjasama antara Palang Merah Spanyol dan Palang Merah Indonesia, inilah hasil yang mereka berikan. Anissa Turahmi is organizing the business at the small grocer shops. This was previously a family business that was destroyed by the disaster. Sini kita memberikan 59 item yang memang sangat mereka butuhkan dalam usaha mereka. Besides the small shops, she is also empowering women to improve their sewing business. Many families that lost their houses are still living in temporary living centres. There are nine temporary living centres built by the Indonesian government in West Aceh. Most of them have bad hygienic conditions. The Red Cross has worked to improve water quality and the sanitary conditions in the nine temporary living centres. Miguel Angel Gonzalez works in a temporary living centre with the water supply and sanitation program. And from this tower, the water goes to a smaller tank to distribute in bathroom, shower and kitchen. Now, the occupants enjoy clean water. To prevent diseases, there is a program called Hygiene Promotion. Interesting activities are carried out to encourage the inhabitants to get the health message. Untuk di depan atas bawah ya, begini menyikat gigi yang benar yang di depan ya. Ya, perhatikan, ini untuk yang depan dulu. Danila graduated from the Faculty of Public Health. She found that people living at the temporary living centres are a high-risk group for the transmission of diseases. Kami memiliki kader yang kami rekrut untuk mentraining hygiene promotion secara umum, tapi kami fokuskan pada ibu dan anak. Ini ya, depan belakang ya. Udah gitu mencungkil. Gimana mencungkil? Iya, dengan mencungkil. The coordinator of PMI in West Aceh is optimistic about the recovery process. Koordinasi yang uh, dilakukan oleh uh, PMI Spanyol atau Spanish Red Cross uh, kami kira sudah cukup baik juga hubungannya kemudian dengan pemerintah daerah, juga dengan pemerintah daerah, uh, kemudian dengan berbagai pihak uh, di dalam menangani masalah-masalah kemanusiaan. Sewajarnya barangkali kami dari PMI Aceh Barat juga dari pemerintah daerah menyampaikan ucapan terima kasih kepada Spanish Red Cross. Mudah-mudahan ini mungkin kerjasama yang kita lakukan ke depan itu akan lebih akan lebih erat dalam rangka menangani berbagai persoalan-persoalan yang menyangkut dengan pengungsi kita juga yang masih memerlukan bantuan. Gustavo Domato the head of the SRC mission in Indonesia often visits West Aceh and is seriously planning the future programs. 
the tsunami operation of the Spanish Red Cross will continue until 2010. Now, the best way to secure the future of the project that we are implementing here is by continuing working through the Indonesian Red Cross. Therefore, it's very important that all the projects that we are designing are included in the strategy that the Indonesian Red Cross has for the rest of the country. Traffic in the capital is heavy now, even heavier than before. The people are making a fresh start. The West Aceh community has begun to rebuild their lives. People have high hopes for a better future. This is life in West Aceh at the present time. There's another place affected by disaster in Indonesia, the island of Nias. Nias is a beautiful small island located in the southwest of West Aceh. The population is 800,000. It's much less developed than other places in Indonesia. Lots of large stones remain, the cultural legacy of the megalithic times. From the village, we can see wonderful beaches and sometimes folk dances. This is a dance to welcome guests of honour. After a welcome dance, some men will be showing off their skill at jumping over a monolith. Three months after the deadly tsunami that hit its neighbour Aceh, another big earthquake rocked this island on March 28, 2005. Few people are willing to work here since this area is hard to reach and quite remote. Mariano Gomez is the SRC coordinator in Nias. He came to this region in 2005. Many people died, but not so many as Aceh. But the problem here was the economy of the Nias people fall down completely. The Spanish Red Cross is one of the organisations entering the southern part of the island. It is the most isolated area in the whole island. The construction team is building 80 houses and 10 schools. Sonia Olza is an energetic person who is an expert in environmentally friendly construction. Here in the computer is the design of the semi-permanent house, which is a, a type of house that we are building for some be beneficiaries who were afraid of the earthquake at the very beginning and they didn't trust the construction in concrete. We call it semi-permanent because it has uh, concrete and it has wood, so it has two types of materials and here they call that to be semi-permanent. This is a village in the Teluk Dalam sub-district. Most houses here are damaged. This family is about to move from their tent into their new house. Every house will be installed with electrical fittings and a plumbing fixture. This is an emergency school in Bawanahono village. Before the school reconstruction is started here, the construction team is holding a meeting with teachers, the headmaster, parents, a government official and educational authorities to disseminate information on the construction plans. So here we have two classrooms and then septic tank, absorption tank and water tank. A school is also being built in Hilisimaitano village. Each 
Educational activities are still underway while the school building is under construction. Sudah ibu bilang tadi bahwa sebelum makan itu harus cuci tangan. Ten strong school buildings like this will be ready by mid-2007. In conjunction with the execution of the project, a widespread health campaign is conducted for students, parents, teachers and villagers. It's the 5th of October, 2006. Okay, so my name is Emma. I work for Spanish Red Cross. Today, in Bawanahona village, Emma Hernandez Wyatt and Darius Beer are introducing the health program to some of the pupils. They always wash the hands before eating? Selalu cuci tangan sebelum makan? Bener. Selalu enggak cuci tangan sebelum makan? So our idea is to increment the, the knowledge of the children regarding hygiene promotion because we have seen that there is a lack of information. They are now on the way to Bawa Matalua village. It's a nice ancestral village on a hill. If you have any questions, our colleagues will be happy to answer them or Ida from the Puskesmas. Yeah. Jika misalnya ada pertanyaan, boleh bertanya ke kita punya tim atau ke kami atau ke Ida dari Puskesmas. Sore hari ini mulai jam 1 kita melakukan program polio campaign yang kurang lebih jumlah anak di bawah umur 5 tahun itu adalah kurang lebih 300 anak. Sejauh ini kita sudah target sekitar 270 anak tadi sore ini untuk vaksinasi dan masih berlangsung sampai sekarang. Saya merasa senang karena itu lebih baik buat anak saya untuk di masa depan agar mereka lebih kuat dan terhindar dari penyakit. Sekarang musim segala penyakit. Emma is very passionate in the health field. She doesn't want to miss any children. She has a target that at least 98% of the total number of children here get the vaccination. Many villages in Nias are located on the hills. In the past, they wanted to fortify the villages from outside attacks. The problem now is water supply. For years, villagers have had to get water 100 metres from the village down a set of slippery stone stairs. This condition is the concern of the Water Supply and Sanitation Programme. This is a field training session for farmers in a paddy field. This activity falls under the livelihood program. Saat ini livelihood di Palamera Spanyol untuk Nia Selatan itu kita bekerja di Kecamatan Teluk Dalam dan kita bekerja membantu masyarakat di bidang pertanian, peternakan dan juga usaha kecil di 10 desa yang ada di Kecamatan Teluk Dalam. Untuk praktek penyemayan padi ini, eh, pertama mereka membuka lahan, membabak, baru mereka cangkul dan membuat petak-petak untuk tempat persemayan. People in today's Nias can get back to their normal Sunday service and prayer meetings, thanking God for His guidance and blessing during the hard times. Meanwhile, there are more than 20 European tourists who go surfing on Surake Beach. This could be seen as an indication of the initial recovery from the national tragedy.